It says in verse 26, this is what Joshua did in the advance, and we're going to go through some of these, the, the trials and the issues that strengthen and test our resolve as believers. Every advancement you do brings you out of a place of a comfort zone. Every advance you do in your faith walk, every time you want to move forward, you're coming out of a comfort zone. And you're going to be stepping into, a, into an area or region you've never been before. Say, say why I caught that hint? Reach for the little thing and pull it up. It's not very big. I have to pin it in there, okay? Every place you advance, when you can move your faith into a new level, you can stretch something into another dimension. You're going where you've normally never been before. And it's an issue that can challenge us around every dimension of our life. And, and believers, sometimes we get ourselves, and we know this, into a comfort place. I'm okay where I'm at. But the Spirit of God is not okay because there is so much territory in your life and in your walk to claim. Not only the souls and lives of other nations and, and those things that are around you, you have to advance into places you've never been. You have to deal with issues you've never dealt with before. You have to trust God for the anointing and for the favor, for the miracles and the presence of God and the, and the communications. Everything that we do as we advance in natural realms and other nations to bring souls to Christ. We're doing the same thing in our daily walk. I want to advance my faith beyond where my faith is. Joshua was given a lot of encouragement by God. Way back in Joshua chapter 1, God had said, every place the sole of your foot shall tread, every place that I have given you, and he gives them the parameters, you're going to be here to here to here, and all the land, all by the Mediterranean, all the way up through the, through the Jordan and beyond, I'm going to hand all of this to you, but it's got to be every place that the sole of your foot takes. So here is the realm of the place of your occupation, and you're here. But here is the realm of your occupation. But you're here. But in order to claim all this, you have to go from here to here to here to here to here to here to here. You have to begin a campaign. And the Word of God gives us promise upon promise, direction upon direction, and then the convictions of the Holy Spirit for your calling and who God wants you to witness to, how God wants you to testify, and the direction God wants you to take, and the ministries that God wants to have come out of your spirit. There is ground to take, lives to take. Your home needs to be one to Christ. Some of you know what you're dealing with even now. Finance is brought in check with the Word of God. There is much to accomplish, and God says, here's the parameter of what I'm handing to you, and do not fear the old thing is done. I'm ready for you to advance. The season here is finished. Your wilderness journey it's time to end. I gave you the promises when you were in the wilderness journey, but the promises aren't for the wilderness. They're for the place you're supposed to occupy. Your faith walk. Our confession is, as Christians, the advancement of the body of Christ at a global level. And we start from our own walk. And God gave Joshua every bit of this, and he handed him the parameters, and, and Joshua grabbed it as God said, as long as you meditate on this word day and night, then the word will control your thinking. The word will control your heart. If you only visit the word of God, then your own thoughts, the world's thoughts, and the struggles and the trials, those are going to begin to dictate how you think and how you react. So every trial is going to come with fear and pushback instead of, I've let my mind occupy the Word of God. I made the Word of God the central theme of all that I am. So now that I'm meditating on it day and night, it's become my constant thought pattern. So when I move forward, when I do anything, it's the Word that's always with me, the Word that's always with me, the Word that's always with me. That's why believers, we can't have just, just a little nice sermon about, about just nice things. We've got to have the Word of God in your spirit. You need to know this because that's what the Holy Ghost is going to pull up on every advancement that you make. And he says as long as you do that, he says you will prosper and you will have great success. Now those words prospering to succeed means to push through to the place of your victory. You will push through. You know, in Psalm chapter 1, and I was reading this the other day, and then I looked up all the meaning of the word. The Bible says, blessed is the one that does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. I looked up that word because that, that, that word connected the word of happiness and joy, but it connected to the word to advance. It means to advance in your life is the one that chooses the counsel of God rather than the counsels of the world. Advancing in your life is the one that chooses with happiness is the one that will rejoice because you choose the counsel of God instead of the counsels of man. 
So God has brought Joshua to this place, and Joshua has to make his decisions. He's, he's ready. God says, this is what we're going to do. And you know the great transition across the Jordan River. God says, now get the ark, and I want you to have the priests, and they're going to walk the ark into the, into the water. We're going to begin this campaign. Somebody say campaign. campaign. We're going to begin this campaign. The promised land is over there. But all the promises now are in here. So with the promises in God's presence, because God wants you over there, you begin to advance because you're loaded down with the word of God. You're loaded down with every prophetic heart of heaven. You're loaded down with the advancement of God. You've got the word, and now it's not for here anymore. It's for the other side of the Jordan River. And for the nation of Israel... To prove that God was, he didn't make it an issue of man to get into the promised land. He made it an issue of God so that even in our little doubts, God would prove the great miracle. If I could part the Jordan, I could slay the nations before you. If I can take a place that is impossible to pass, something you cannot do, and sovereignly and supernaturally, because people always say, God, I just need a sign from heaven. Have you ever been there? Okay, that was a nice one. How about two? Do you happen to have a third one up your sleeve? God, I really could. It would really help if I got about five more just to be sure that I'm sure that I'm ready to trust that I think I'm going to try to believe you. Well, God gives them a sign and a half when right there as the ark touches the edge of the water, heaven jumped in and the water stopped, drained away, and God dried a path right through into the territories they were to advance. Now remember, when you advance in, there's always an opposition. Somebody say opposition. opposition. There wasn't a lot of opposition in the wilderness it was a very controlled environment. That's why it's a comfort zone for so many people because in the wilderness, you have to choose to have to engage something that might be out there. Other than that, you can just sit pretty right there in the wilderness and be okay under the glory cloud and under the pillar of fire and everybody's happy and we're eating manna on a daily basis and occasionally maybe a little quail and there's no enemies coming into the camp, but you're sitting in sand. That's not the advancement. The enemies are occupying your territory. Fear is occupying where faith ought to be. Disease is occupying where healing ought to be. Miracles is occupying where darkness is now operating. Miracles should be occupying where darkness is. We get it all right. But no matter what, sin is here, lives are here, but breakthrough belongs to God, and your advancement is going to bring the kingdom of God and engage it against the kingdoms of darkness. So the Jordan River parts and everybody goes through. There is, an, there is a rise of faith. Somebody say faith. When God gives you that first miracle, there is a rush of faith. God brought us in. This is exciting. Somebody say exciting. And now they brought them in to the land, but bringing them to this side of the Jordan is not occupying the land. Your miracle that God brought you into redemption, God brought you into your salvation, is not the place where you're camping. That is your launching pad to begin to advance and engage the kingdom of God into the places of darkness and occupy occupy the word of faith. Somebody say yes, because that's what we're doing. Now that they're on this side of the Jordan, God is a smart God. He shut the door behind them. Somebody say hallelujah. People get really nervous when the door shuts behind them. Whoa, 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 whoa. My way out has just been closed. Remember the first time I went into the, when I went into the prison, I, we did that for like three years in the Cook County prison. And I remember the first time those doors shut behind me and I heard that clink, that real bang. And some of you had been there on the wrong side. Sorry, we probably visited you. Um, but, 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 but you're here today. See, God did save you. But, but when that door shut behind me, I remember the nerve that went through me. Whoa, that is a sound I did not like. And I was also very grateful that I could leave later that evening. Okay? That sound made me nervous. Can you imagine when that Jordan River shut, it was time to go only one direction, and that was forward. So God made them face their first issue. And their first issue was Jericho. And God made a direction in your walk. Now we want you to see where your confession is going to be. You're in. Now let's strengthen. Somebody say strengthen myself. I got to be prepared for each engagement. Remember, the whole land is before me. How much are you going to claim? The whole word of God is before you. How many promises are you going to claim? Oh, I'm only on this, or I only believe that. Well, you're missing the rest of the book. Every promise, all the promises of God are yes and amen. 
2 Corinthians. And the amen is spoken by you. You say it is mine. You say God gave it to me. And then you make the decision that I'm going to stand on what God's word has said because it belongs to me, but I must walk there in my spirit. So up against Jericho they go. And God said, here's the strategy. I want to strengthen your faith because now you're going to use your mouth and begin to speak things you've never spoken before. So I'm going to prepare you in the matter. But I want you to know something. The city belongs to me. It is the first fruit of everything. And it belongs to me. I'm going to lift the curse of the Lamb. I'm going to put that curse under the city. And you're going to, we're going to destroy that city. It's going to be like breaking the curse off everything we're about to go in. The city belongs to me. But the word I'm putting in your mouth to bring down the walls. And for seven days, they've circled the city. Can you imagine? At that time, all the nations were terrified, not because Israel came over on rafts, but because God parted it right in front of their faces. They saw, as I said two weeks ago, the potential of the believer. They saw the potential of the nation of Israel. They saw the potential of the God that we serve. Every miracle tells how the potential of what you could accomplish as a believer if you remain steadfast and advanced. It's not just your presence. It's the presence of God in your life, with your life, and the advancement of that, and they see the potential by the power and the authority of the name of Jesus Christ that came out of your life. So when that Jordan River parted, the enemy saw the potential. When the Red Sea had dried up, they saw the potential. It just took 40 years for them to walk into their potential and begin to, to rise to their potential. But when they used the potential, hell is terrified and the nations all shut every door, but it doesn't matter. Jericho was tightly shut up. Everybody in the nation was shaking. How in the nation, everywhere, they were afraid because this army led by a God of miracles and power had just arrived on the scene. And how are they going to take the city of Jericho when they had to watch as Israel marched around it for seven days, once a day for six of those days, once a day, not a sound, not a word. Can you imagine standing back here and watching with fear as the entire army just circles a city quietly once a day just the sound of the ram's horns and the ark of God and the ark of God can you imagine the the shaking in hell should be terrified at your presence because they know there is something on the inside of you that when it is released no matter what he put up in front of you it's about to fall before you that is why your faith confession is everything. And God kept their mouths silent so the faith could build up from the sole of their feet all the way through. And on the seventh day, God said, now we're going to strengthen it. And seven times they would march around the city. One, two, three. You watched it. Four, five. The enemies, the armies that are watching with all their spies from everywhere else are watching the, the armies of Israel and they're going around. One, two, three. And on the seventh time, something was different. Suddenly they all stopped and they shouted at once. And as they shouted, the faith of God roared forth. And they watched as the walls were shoved right into the dirt. Can you imagine the shaking in their very being when the walls went down flat? Nothing can stand before the advancing of the army of God. Jesus said in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 16, I'm going to build my church and what? The gates of hell will not prevail. I'm going to build my church in such a way that hell can lock everything down tight. Every principality and power can sit on every wall of every city, but the advancement of the body of Christ, those walls will come down and those gates will be driven open. The gates of hell will not prevail. There is more authority in you than you know. And the walls came down flat. And the walls were all crushed to the ground. And, and in went Israel, roaring in and claiming everything. But there was a point here 
in every, in every place of our advancement, obedience must be maintained. Because the issue that I said earlier was this. The city belonged to God. God claimed his first part. Why? Because it was God's advance with the, with the nation. It was God's armies that was going over. It was God who was accomplishing the task. And to lift the curse, God had claimed the first portion for himself. Things that he would dedicate for the temple and everything else, the curse from the ground would go to the nation or go into the city and the city would be condemned so the curse would be broke. Amen. It's amazing the power of your giving sometimes. Not only in your giving, it's not, it's not that you're defeating curses, but you're walking into the breakthrough because Jesus became that curse. Right. He became the first fruit unto God. He became the one in Calvary in which all the curse for mankind was suddenly hurled to him. Galatians chapter 5, verses Galatians 3, 13. Every, every bit of the curse came to Christ. But in a type and shadow, there on the grounds by Jericho, God brought that curse and put it on the first fruit on that city. And he, had, he said, now judge it, condemn it, burn it. So that the rest of the ground would be yours to claim. And God was very clear on that covenant statement. And what had taken place in chapter 7, and the Bible says even though they had a great success and the city was destroyed, somebody had touched the curse. Somebody had brought the curse into the camp. Somebody say bad news. You never want to bring the cursed thing into your house. That's the last, get that thing out of my house. Ever, ever wondered why? We were dealing with somebody you know, just about a year back or so, and they were wondering why they had so many problems in their home. And it turned out as they showed me pictures of a curio cabinet, I saw things in there that were cursed. And I said, you got to get those out of your house. There were things that had demonic images, demonic pictures, and things. And you know what? Satan's kingdom is cursed. It is cursed. And you don't bring his kingdom into your house. You got anything in your house that's been, that's, been, that's been given over to hell or given over to witchcraft, you got to root that thing out so fast because Jericho and all these cities were filled with witchcraft. And God judged it and showed the condemning of it. And the nation was to remove it. Israel was to take it out of the way. Keep the accursed things out. You don't have victory and then bring sin into your camp. You remain holy. Somebody say holy. The advancement of the body of Christ. We never bring the world into the ministry. We never bring the world's beliefs and its ideologies into the advancement of the body of Christ. We drive those things out and make sure we are a holy people. We remain steadfast in the word of God. Church, you cannot engage the world. You can't suddenly think you're going you're to maintain your victory and then begin to compromise and bring things that are judged under the word of God into the middle of the camp of God's people and think you're going to continue advancement. You brought something in so God cannot move forward. Now, here's what happens to Joshua. God's not against you. God is for you. Somebody say, God's for me. God's for in your advancement, God's for you. And he wants the advancement because he does not lie. He had told Joshua, every place to sow your foot tread, I have already given it to you. But now something is in the way and they're about to find out. And God has to address it. But the, but the response of Joshua tells us sometimes how we get when things don't work out right, when we make our first attempts at faith. And the Bible says in chapter 7, but the children of Israel, verse 1, had committed a trespass regarding the accursed things. For Achan, the son of Carmel, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, took of the accursed things, so the anger of the Lord burned against the children of Israel. Now the curse is in the camp. You don't want the curse in the camp. God can't advance when the curse is in the camp. And the curse now stops God's advancement or God's ability to bless. So now for now they're connected to the curse. So judgment can only be in their midst because what is in there doesn't belong there. And Joshua sent men from Jericho to Ai, which is between Beth-Avon on the east side of Bethel. And this is important. They're on their way to the next campaign. They're going to go from Jericho to Ai. Next to Ai is a little place called Bethel. And in this town of Ai, this is to be their next campaign movement. But what they do not know is they have something that's a curse in the midst of their camp. And you're moving with the presence and the power of God toward the next engagement. And you're not prepared. And here's what happens. And you all got to check ourselves. Ever had that great big miracle? Great big breakthrough? And you just launch into the next thing like everything's great. 
and then something falls flat? Because you use the victory of this miracle and the faith of this miracle, and you use this for this next move. Instead of this faith was for this miracle, now I need faith for this next move, and then faith for the next move, and then faith for the next move. Are you all with me? It's too easy that, okay, God gave it to us here. That's all that we need. Now we're just going to charge right on through. Every advancement requires your faith power in the middle of it. It requires all of you in the move. Nothing changes. You moved, you saw God move here, you rally yourself and you prepare to move here. You rally yourself and you prepare to move here. In every place that you go, you rally yourself for the next move. And what happened was, is in the first move, they got all excited. They didn't realize something was in their midst that didn't belong there. And instead of preparing for the next move, they just decided we don't need everybody. Grab a couple of thousand. Hell, they only half have to go. The rest can stay home. No one needs to be a part and they forgot who they were. Our advancement as the body of Christ requires all the church. It requires every believer. Every believer involved in the power of prayer. Every one of us, whether those that go or those that are here, everyone is a part of the next advancement. And the nation to advance against Ai required the whole nation in strategy to move forward and hear the heart of God. And they didn't do it. They didn't, they didn't seek God. They didn't trust in God at that level. They just grabbed a couple of thousand. They looked at things in the natural and not in the supernatural. They brought about 3,000 people up, and they went in before Ai. And Ai, listen to me, the enemy is always going to do a pushback. Somebody say pushback. He's only going to fall because your, the only time he's going to fall is when your potential becomes action. Right. Having potential is one thing. Using the fullness of your potential is something else. The enemy is always going to test your resolve and are you at your full potential when you advance. You used it here, but are you using it here? And Israel did not use their full potential. They took some of them and they launched in in the natural and not in the spirit. They did not hear from God. They did not ask God because if they had, God would have checked them. Somebody say check them. Sometimes you get that check. God's like, something's not ready yet. You're not prayed up hard enough. Something might be in the way. You've got to always be ready for every engagement. Remember, you're no longer in the wilderness. You're now moving and advancing your faith walk. And your faith walk must be stronger and stronger as you move forward so you can occupy every place God's called you to occupy. And they advanced against the city, just 3,000, while all the rest stayed home. Everybody's happy. Everybody's content. They're not realizing there's an accursed thing inside the camp. And they try to move against another principality. Remember, every city is controlled by a demonic power. Every city is controlled by demonic power. And the enemy comes roaring out to try to defend their little spot because they know they could be defeated and they recognize Israel is not walking in their potential or authority and Israel is driven back from them. The 3,000 are driven back in terror. 36 of them are killed, which was a lot for them, anybody to die because they don't like to lose anybody in a battle. And they are driven back, and Ai has claimed a marvelous victory over an entire nation. Now, I want you to look at this, because the result of the failure on Israel's part brought everybody back to it, almost to a place of imploding. You got your faith going, and you had your big vi first victory, but you're not strengthened for your next engagement. And your next engagement falls flat. And the thing is, how are you prepared to handle when things stumble? Somebody say stumble. stumble. When things stumble, does that mean it's all over with? Say, say it louder than that. No. no. Because something stumbles, does that mean it's over with? No. Does that mean it wasn't God's will to advance? No. no. It may mean that something's amiss or something wasn't strong enough in the advance. Was the first one of God? Yes. yes. Was crossing the Jordan River of God? Yes. Why? Because he parted it. Was facing Jericho of God? Yes. Why? Because the walls went down flat. Right? right. Is every place the sole of your foot the will of God? Yes. yes. So when they engaged against Ai and Ai won, did God change his mind in the battle? No. Did Ai belong to be destroyed like Jericho according to the word of God? Yes. yes. 
So knowing where you walk in your faith is now going to get you. Why? Because these nations were filled with every type of perversion and witchcraft, they, their, their, their judgment had reached the highest levels. We have no concept of how wicked the nations were. And God needed to wipe it all down, just like he did when he brought the flood in the days of Noah. He's removing a wickedness beyond comprehension. So they engage it, and they are not spiritually prepared for the confrontation. So they are driven back because they're in the flesh and not in the spirit. And the result is, is how Joshua, who is supposed to be the leader, responds to the failure. And this is important because we got to recognize Joshua's had some victories on the other side of the Jordan. Every engagement were controlled engagements. He had been in the wilderness for 40 years. It was almost a comfort zone. So the, so the promised land was new. It was something different. It was now where all of his skills, which had been properly protected and covered, could now be advanced into and have to be used in a place they've never been before. If, if you remember, all of the children of Israel that came out of Egypt kept wanting to go back where? to Egypt. All they faced was the wilderness. made them fearful. They would rather go back to the bondages of Egypt where they said they ate leeches and whatever, and they were beaten on a daily basis. But they would rather run back there than dwell in a wilderness. I mean, that was, that was a scary place, and yet that was just a transitionary place. And yet that's where God showed himself mighty, brought the glory cloud, brought the fire, brought the manna, brought the water. I mean, he did everything there. He protected them there in a controlled environment. And this is where Joshua has been raised, is in the controlled environment, and now he's the leader of the nation, going into the place of engagement. And he is shooken in his spirit. Look what he does. Verse 6 of chapter 7. And Joshua tore his clothes. That's a sign of, oh my goodness. Can you imagine Walmart would be full of people who everybody tore their clothes every time they had a bad day. <laughs> They'd be happy. They'd be, the shirts would be flying off the shelves, you know. Not going to do you any good, except on a you know, day like today, you'll freeze to death. So you may want to think twice before you start ripping your clothes apart. It's a great testimony to how stupid you really are, because it's five degrees. Guy's tearing his clothes. I don't know. He needs help. He's more than a jacket. He needs a big jacket with those cute little long arm sleeves. Notice, Joshua tells his tears his clothes, fell, fell to the earth on his face before the ark of the Lord until evening. And the elders of Israel, they put dust on their heads. So they're laying there half buried like ostriches in the dirt. But there's a problem here. Where are they at? They're before God, right? They're before the ark of God. But what are they not doing? They're not trusting God. They're not engaging God with any faith. They're just laying there before the ark of God, building a case against God. Imagine getting into the presence of God to yell at God. I come before the throne of grace so I can tell you all. I don't know what you're thinking here, but if you notice this, is it working? I mean, and I know... I'm, I'm saying it right. I may not be saying the exact words that some of you have used. <laughs> but I guarantee you that it has happened. Coming to God's glorious presence just to tell him how something messed up and he needs to fix it. <laughs> and that's exactly what Joshua does. He forgets everything. And suddenly he's going to long for the wilderness as the old, as the other generation longed for Egypt, Jacob, I mean, Joshua wants to run back to the wilderness. Notice, and Joshua says, alas, Lord God. Oh, poor God. I mean, because it's poor Joshua. I mean, God, I don't know, man. You just really messed this one up. And he says, God, why have you? I know you've never done that. Make God responsible for your inactions and responsible for your mess-ups. God, if you hadn't birthed me so squirrely, I'd be okay right now. God's like, I gave you my word to fix squirrely. You ain't applied it yet. That's why you're still... Thank you. 
little application of the word will fix what's broke, okay? But he says, God, why have you brought this, why have you brought us over this Jordan at all? In order to deliver us into the hands of the, notice the word Amorites, you know what that means? Gatekeepers. Who did they come against on the other side of the Jordan? The Amorites. We busted through the Amorites. We busted through the gatekeepers. And now that they see we've been defeated, they are going to come with like gangbusters. They are coming for us. They were there to block the land, and we busted through them, and now they're going to come for us. They see we've lost our strength. He says, to destroy us for the Amorites, oh, that we had been content and dwelt on the other side of the Jordan. And he begins to rehearse the fears of Numbers chapter 13. When all the children of Israel, when they had first come up to the promised land, and Joshua and, and Moses sends a group in, and they go, oh, it looks great, except for too many enemies. They're too big. They're too vast. Not only do we look like grasshoppers in their eyes, but our faith is so small, we look like grasshoppers in our own eyes. I mean, think about it. Telling yourself and, everybody's, and everybody else just how inadequate you are. That's, that's not a good, if you want to make a good first impression, that's not the way to start off. Get the sin out. It must take place. Now let me just bring it down. Chapter 8. I'm not going to get all the way to the spear, but I've been working on this because just going through it, I see the heart and the reaction that sometimes we get. We get offended. We get mad at God. We want to quit. We want to give up. We throw our hands up with all of our pride and all of our selfishness, and we do that. I'm not, I'm not being mean. I'm just being truthful. How many of you just what I'm talking about? You've been to that place. Then you get mad at God, and it's all God's fault. People backslide because they do not want to face that maybe there's something that they missed. Maybe they're resolved. If you just give God the chance, Instead of spending the whole time in his presence belly aching about how he failed. Because God did not fail. The failure was in the camp. Not that Joshua failed except for he let people tell him how he should advance against the city without asking God as the leader of the nation. He let others tell him how to handle the strategy. And even if they gave him good counsel, he needed to have it confirmed because he was the leader of the nation. Do you understand? Counsel is great, but conviction is everything. And as the leader of the nation, he was responsible because he cannot tell God, yeah, but they told me to do it this way. That's nice, but they're not the leader. They're counsel to the leader. If their counsel is good, God will confirm it. If it's bad, God will confront it. Do you understand? So your life needs to be the counsel of God in your midst, that you know God and you hear from God. So when you're going to advance, it can't be on somebody else's just their counsel. It's got to be on the heart and the word of God for your life as you move forward. Once they faced it and they rooted it out and they confronted it and they destroyed it, therefore the curse was lifted. That means what? The plan is back on track. Somebody say, somebody say the plan is back. All it was was delayed. All it was was delayed. And now it's time to re-engage, win this battle here, and then plan for the further conquest of the nation. The plan is still on. The battle is still to be fought. Win this one here. And God says, now God's talking to Joshua again, chapter 8. Do not be afraid. See the grace and the mercy of God. God's going to beat up on you. But sometimes he's got to raise his voice a little bit just to get your attention. Because you're crabbing louder than he can talk right now. Shut up so I can tell you where your problem is. Okay? Yeah, but God, shut up. You can imagine if God just hurled through the heavens. God, talk to me. Shut up. Okay? Take that as a hallelujah. At least he talked to you. I heard the anointed. Shut up and listen. Shut up. And let him move through you to the word 
and let them rise up in your spirit and say, now, here it is, deal with it, and let's get on. I love you. My blessing in my heart hasn't changed. All I want to do is get out of the way, that which is standing in my way, of blessing you. I want you to hear me. Do what I tell you to do so I can continue with my delight for your life. We get mad at God. All he wants to do is advance you. Just let him work out that thing that's got to go. Stop for a minute so we can give you the strategy. And then when you win, he's, he reads, he's going to reconnect. And then it's going to be time to watch me roar through your life. And God says, now don't be afraid nor dismayed. Take all of the people. This is chapter 8, verse 1. All the people of war with you. Everybody is engaged in the fight. None of this sloppy stuff. We're all going in. Not just a few. Even those in the camp need to pray. David had his armies when he was still advancing against and he was moving forward and there was, there was teams with them and, and some were exhausted in the fight and they, and they stayed back with the plunder and others went forward into the battle. But those that stayed back protected the plunder. They were there. They just were too weird to fight. And when everybody came back from the battle, David said, everybody gets a part in the pot because they all were a part of the battle. Those that could war and those that were exhausted and stayed back and protected everything, everybody is in the fight. That's why as a church we run as one. That's why we take nations as one. We do it by watching every heart and every life brought to a place where you were effective right in the house. That's how every church, every pastor is going to, ought to be. Vision and mission and passion and drive to win and advance the kingdom of God takes everybody in the house. Right. Not just a few who have the vision. Everybody must have the heart. Not everybody can, can hop on the plane, but everybody can be a part of the intercession and be a part of the prayer and be a part of the strategy. Everybody can be part of the wisdom and, and the counsel as we make final decisions, as we go forward. Then the whole church receives of the harvest of the increase. Nobody wants to miss out. And God says, take the whole army with you. Everybody, arise and go to Ai now. See, I have given into your hand the principality, the king. When the king goes down, he can't build another city. You're going to take the king down. Take the people, his city, everything. And you shall do to it what you did to Jericho. Only for you, all the plunder of the city belongs to you. It's time Prospering to prosper. Stand to your feet in the house. And the next is all the strategy. How God strengthens the resolve of Joshua. And he puts together a strategy of 30,000 people here. And I mean, it's an excellent. The taking of the city of Ahai is really cool because it's a military strategy that God made them use the natural wisdoms that you get to accomplish a spiritual direction. All the armies are going to come out. They're going to block, they're going to block, Jer they're, they're going to block, what's the other city over there? No, no, no. Bethel, sorry. Bethel was right next door. They're going to put a garrison there. Because the armies of Bethel are, going to, of Bethel are going to come out to join Ai, and they will, the garrison is going to close it behind them. And 30,000 sitting over here. And another group sitting over here. With a few that are going to pop up to draw them out. And then everybody's going to join in the fight. Even the greatest of strategies needs divine creation. But it's going to take everybody in the battle. And they're going to come after that city. And the nations on the outside are going to watch Israel again engage the failure. So we talk about out of faith can come a miracle, but also out of failure can come a miracle. Don't let any failure in your life stop you. There's a breakthrough, there's a miracle coming out of it somewhere if you are willing to re-engage. And Joshua brought all the armies, heard from God, and God was right there. God did not leave him. It's like, Jackie, come down here. Just, 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 just come here. Come here, come here, come here. 
Torah. <clears throat> Wherever, let's say there was a trial, Jackie's got to go back again and restart again. God says, okay, Jackie, I got you. We're going to walk this way. I'm not going to leave you. We're going to walk this way. I'm not going to leave you. We're going to walk this way, this way. And I'm not going to leave you. <clears throat> I'm going to walk you all the way through to where we both stretch our hands out, we point, and we don't stop till we win. And God's going to run right alongside you in the battle. God's going to give the strategy to Joshua. He's going to say, now we're going to take this city because I want to take it but good. Because I saw what the enemy meant for evil. I didn't hate you. I hated the sin and the accursed thing in the camp because it blocked me from blessing you. So when I re-got your attention, I got you to root it out. So now we're going to run together, and when I point, you're going to point. And Joshua and all the armies are ready to go, and they start. You're going to point your spear. And Joshua, you're going to watch the battle win. Do you remember, Joshua, those many years ago when that first war you had and Moses stood on a mountain and he held that staff up, but you watched it. And as long as it stayed up, you prevailed. Do you remember that miracle back then? It's not going to be a miracle for you now. Let's take this city. Because there's nations that we need to invade. There's the kingdom of God to advance. Now stretch your spear out, hold it and trust me. And Joshua, with a regaining of confidence and a resurgence of faith, and a recognize that even in failure, God has it all. His faith is boosted with a depth of confidence knowing God did bring him through. And he will stretch his spear out. That's where we started this thing. And he will hold it there and hold it there. And his armies would watch that spear. And they would continue the battle all the way through until all the inhabitants of Ai and Bethel are completely defeated. And when that battle is done, they're going to cross to the middle of all their territory to two mountains. They're going to set up a beautiful altar, stones whitewashed with all the law of God on it. And there they're going to reconsecrate and rededicate everything for the next engagement. They're going to claim it. They're going to shout the blessings of obedience, the cursings of disobedience. They're going to shout them back and forth. Then they're going to get ready for the next engagement. Lift your hands up before the Lord. Every battle belongs to God as long as we give it to Him. And even in a trial or in a failure, what doesn't seem to work, we go back and we say, God, show me. Peter says, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God so that in due time he may lift you up. He will. Put yourself under God's hands and God, you'll take care of it. I don't have to do it outside of you. You will fix this what's broke. And right now today as you go forward, every one of us is a church, but you as individuals, your family, your home, your life, the vision of God for you, we're with you in the fight and so is God. Take a look. Is there something that needs to go? Now's the time to get rid of it. Something that needs to change, and now's the time to change it because God wants to be with you in the advancement of the fight. Are we walking in what is righteous as we step into a new year? They began the engagement. They had stopped because of a hiccup. They cleared it out, and they advanced with confidence, trust, humility, and bold faith, and they would take that city. They would rally themselves together. All the nations would now come together as one, and God would defeat the next battle as one. He would do it, and he'll do it again and again throughout history. God called them to advance, and he'll accomplish the task.